Let's just start. Hi. Okay. Uh, Bez Hashem, today's daf is daf Yud Dalid. We will begin on daf Yud Gimel Omid Beis. On top by the, it's a little bit, uh, we didn't finish the Mishnah yesterday because it was so much, but we'll just go it over. Uh, we learned yesterday uh, that there is an opinion that there is an opinion of, right, the classic picture of, of, of the brother marrying the erva, right? Ruven and Shimon are brothers, and Shimon marrying uh, the daughter of Ruven, Rachel. So the, our Mishnah said that if Shimon dies, because Ruven can't do Yibim on Rachel, so also the co-wife is also exempt from Yibim and Chalitza. Not only that, if Ruven would do Yibim or Chalitza to, to the co-wife, it would be an Iser Eishas Ach, okay? If they would actually do, according to our Mishnah, which is the sheet of Beis Hillel, if they actually do uh, marry each other, their child would be a Mamzer. Comes along a big Chiddush that we had yesterday, and we had this, this uh, big Chiddush yesterday, is Beishamai holds that just the opposite. Beishamai holds that the co-wife is permitted to marry Reuven. The co-wife of an erva was not under the Isser. So uh, therefore, according to Beishamai, it, 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 Miriam would need either Yibam or Chalitza. That's what we saw <coughs> yesterday. So that's where we're up to. Beishamai on Matiran, but starting in the bottom, the last line of Yudimel Amid Aleph, and we're going to do uh, uh, cover a lot of ground today. Bez Hashem. Beishamai Matiran Hatsaras La'acham. Beishamai says the Tsaras, uh, the co wife, is permitted to the brothers. In fact, they're supposed to marry or they're supposed to do a chalitza. Well, Beisila Oistrum. Beisila says, no, the co wife, you're not allowed to marry the co wife. And if you do marry the co wife, the child is a mamzer. So you see, um, according to Beis Hillel, if they get married and they have a child, the child would be a mamzer. According to the Beis Shammai, if you let the co-wife go without a chalitza and without a yibam, then there's be an iser lav. If a woman is supposed to fall to yibam and then she doesn't get anything, so anybody who marries her is gets an iser lav of loisia eishes samei sachutza, that, the, that the, a woman who's supposed to fall to yibam cannot marry somebody else. So the, the, we'll see about that. Chaltzu. The Mishnah said, let's just, Sheldon just began. Yeah. Hi. Shel, uh, yeah. Hi, Sheldon. We, hi, we, good evening, everybody. Okay, we're just uh, continuing on the discussion of Beishamai and Beishilo. Beishamai mm -hmm. says that the co-wife, <laughs> you're supposed to do Yibim for, or you are permitted to do Yibim, or Chalitza. And Basila says, which we're accustomed to, the co-wife of the erva, you can it you can let go free, and and it would be an iser, it would be an iser daraisa to uh, to marry that co-wife. It would be if you would marry the co-wife, the child would be a mamzer. Chaltzu, if you give a if you give the chalitza to the co-wife, so according to Beishama, you did the right thing. So therefore, Beishama poislam and akuna Beishama. Apostles, this lady from marrying a coin because just like a coin mar can't marry a grusha, a divorcee, she also uh, a coin cannot marry somebody who got a kosher chalitza. Or Basila Machshirim. Basila says, even if you gave chalitza, nothing uh, you didn't do anything because she the co-wife didn't require a chalitza, she was part of from Yibam and Chalitza anyway. So Basila says this co-wife is always permitted to marry a coin. Nis Yabamu, let's say they they did Yibam. He did Yibim with the co-wife, Beishamei Machshirim. Then Beishamei will say that if he died, the, if the brother died after doing Yibim, the, the co-wife is permitted to marry a Kohen because she's just a widower. But Ubeisilil Paislim, because Beisilil says this co-wife can never will be called a Zaina. How could she have married the brother? Uh, she was not supposed to marry the brother. And if she did marry the brother, she's called a Zaina, somebody who's married to somebody who's Osir, so she's possible for marrying a kahuna. So you can see right away that there's going to be big problems for Beishamai to marry into the Beis Hillel family. Because according to Beis Hillel, some of the people in Beishamai were Mamzerim. And according to Beishamai, some people in Beis Hillel's family were Oiver and Isser Lav. So, So 
they they had really diametrically opposed positions when it came to uh, this co-wife. The the Mishnah says that the, in history, they didn't they didn't um, they didn't um, stop from marrying the women of Beis Hillel. And Veloy Basil, maybe Shamay, Basil's family did not stop getting getting married to Beishamay's family. Uh, even though there's a possibility exists that some of Beishabai's children were Mamzerim. Uh, but they never uh, they as, as we'll see in the Gemara, that the discussion concerns itself with Basil uh, would be notified Beishama if, if they got married to each other, they would do research to make sure that they didn't um run into a problem of what would be called a mamzer to Beis Hillel, uh, if there was a problem like that in Beis Shammai's family. But they did marry into each other. And the Mishnah says like this, Kol Any tahara and tumba, for example, let's say in Turim and Tahara, let's say a, a, a vessel, where Beis Hillel would say that the, the vessel is Tomei, and Beis Shammai would say it's Tahar, they would still lend each other vessels to each other. But they would notify. Beis Hillel had no problem uh, borrowing a vessel belonging to Beis Shammai's family and using that. If Beis Shammai told him that uh, that uh, that according to my opinion it's tahar, so they would notify. If it's a, they would tell him that don't make taharis, don't use it for taharis because according to your opinion this vessel is tame. So they didn't hesitate from borrowing each other and lending each other vessels to each other. So now the Gemara discusses. We discuss the co-wife, and the co-wife, according to Beishamai, is totally permitted to do Yibam for, even though the Erva not, but the co-wife not. And we're going to see, Sheldon gave a, 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 an answer yesterday, and the Gemara is going to come out with that answer of why the co-wife is, is, is permitted. But, but first, the Gemara wants to bring a source for Sukkim. Amr Abshim Ibn Pesazi, my time at the Beishami. What's the reason? Uh, what is the reason, Beishami, that the co wife is permitted? So the reason is, the Ksiv, it says in the Posik by, by uh, Yibim, Loi Sia Aishas Ames Hachutza Liizar. The woman of the, of the, the, the dead man's wife should not be outside to a strange person. Hachutza is a, the, the outside wife. What's an outside wife? An unrelated wife, a, a, a wife that's not an erva. Chutza, miklal, the ika panimis. There's an inner wife. There's a wife that is an erva that's related. So the Pasuk is saying that the erva wife, the inner wife, let's say it's his wife's sister or, his, or it's his daughter. Of course, don't do yibam for that. But the outer wife, the one that's not related, don't let her go out without a yibam or chalitza. So that's the source of Beshami saying that the co wife, it has to do either Yibba Machalitza. The Torah says she can't marry somebody else. Ubeis Hillel. What do they need this Pasuk Hachutza? They tell you that the Pasuk, the interpretation of that Pasuk is the way Rav Yehuda Marav said the Pasuk. How do you know, in a regular case, a woman that falls to Yibba, one lady that falls to Yibba, let's say a, a stranger comes to her and marries and, and and a stranger comes to her and um, gives her kedushin, right? Gives her the, the, the tries to make kedushin. Normally, with a chayve lavin, somebody that there's an only a lav in the Torah to marry, kedushin would work. But here is the only case, the kedushin would not take effect by Yavama. How do you know that kedushin would not take effect by Yavama if a strange man would come and try to give her kedushin? Shinema, the Pasuk says, If a strange man comes, the Kedushin will not take effect. And that's what Loisia teaches you. That is the opinion of Beis Hillel. Ubeishamai. Beishamai says, you can't learn that's the Pshat. Miksif Lachutz. Does it tell you that this woman should not be to the outside? Chutzaksiv. It's a noun that describes who she is. She's an outside woman, an unrelated woman. So it's more likely the Pshat and the Pasuk is the way Beishamai learned that the outside woman, the unrelated woman of a co-wife of, of, a co-wife of an Evra is not permitted to go out without a Chalitza. Well, Beishilil, Beishilil says, no, the, it, it's almost, it's, it says La Chutz, but the word Chutza can sometimes be interpreted to La Chutz. Rashi says this in Chumash often. 
Kevin the Ksiv Chutza, since the Pasuk wrote the word Chutza, Keman the Ksiv Lachutz Dami. It's as if it says the word Lachutz. Lachutz. How do you know that? Because there's a hey, it's the time we learned at the Brisa, Ram Nechem Yoime, Kol Teva. If you have a Hebrew word, Shetzricha Lamed Bitchilase, that really, to make sense, it would, you would require to put a Lamed at the beginning of the word. Sometimes the Pasuk will put, hit the Laha of Hey Besoifa. The Torah would write a Hey at the end of the word. The Tanah Debei Rabbi Shmuel, Tanah Debei Shmuel gave you a few examples. Sometimes the Torah wanted they to write Eilim, Le Eilim, and they wrote Eilimo. It, they wanted to say Le Machanayim, and it's wrote Machanayimo. It wanted to say you went down to Mitzrayim, and we went to Mitzrayim, Divlo Soima Yerushalayim, Midbara, Midbar, Midbara. So sometimes, again, in Chumash, uh, you see it in the, the Rashi says this in the beginning of Ayeshlech, the famous Rashi. So Rashi says, instead of saying Artsa to the land of Seir, it's as if it says Le'eretz, because the hey at the end is as if it says Alamed in the beginning. So again, Beis Hillel says that you read the Pasuk as if it says, the dead man's wife, a Yavama, Lachutz should not marry a strange person, and the kedushin would not take take effect. And that's what base base. That's what base Hillel does with that possible. Ube Shamai, the Rabbi Yehuda Amar Rav Menolehu. Where do they know the kick? The, what do they know about this din of Rabbi Yehuda Amar Rav that the that the kedushin would not take effect by uh, a strange person? Because according to Beis Shamai, Hachutza teaches you that the the co-wife has to have a has to have a yibum. It, she, she can't go free. So how do they know that idea uh, that Beis Hillel talked about? They learn it from Meli'ish Zar. The, there's the Pasuk says, any strange person that comes to make a Kedushan with this Yavama, it does not take effect. So the Gemara asks back, Beis Hillel, Meli'ish Zar. Let's learn it out from Meli'ish Zar, the way Beis Hillel learned it. So you could learn that. So you could learn it. That's right. The way Beis Hillel learned that Izhar teaches you that a strange person can't give Kedusha. I agree with that. So then back to the original question, Chutz Alamali, according to Beis Hillel, what does Chutzah teach you? So this teaches you, L'Rabbi Soharusa, that if a woman had only Kedusha, but did not have Chupa, and her husband dies, she falls to Yubim. Because I would have thought that only if the guy married with a Chupa, then there's a there's a there's a there's a situation of yibam, but on Arusa, the Torah says bias. So I would think that that if if he didn't marry her, so there's no Indian of yibam. That's why it says chutzah. Even this outer woman that never really had a full chupin, a full uh, wedding, she also could fall to yibam. The idach, how does Beishamay know this idea? Chutza ha chutza. It says the word ha chutza with an extra hey at the beginning of the word. That's how you know that idea. The idach beis hillel chutza ha chutza loy mashmalu. They don't darshan the extra hey from the beginning. Sometimes the Torah will put in an extra hey, but it has no meaning to it for a drasha. Okay, so that's one reason how Beishame knows that the co-wife, according to Beishame, the, the, what the, the according to Beishame, uh, this 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 is hold on. Hold on. Okay, this is this is one reason how Beishamai knows that um, that there's you're supposed to give to the co-wife. Rava Amma, this is what uh, Sheldon wanted to say yesterday. Tamayu de Beishamai is the ain iser chal al iser. That really, this lady of a co-wife is a, an iser uh, uh, has an iser on her, and we don't. The Gemara wanted to say that the 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 that the Isser Erva doesn't apply to her. It's a very strange, first of all, Pasuk says the Isser Erva doesn't apply. The Gemara says the Isser Erva doesn't come on to her because she was Aishas Ach first. So the Gemara says, If the, the, the dead brother married first and then the live brother married the sister, then the Isser of Achais Isha, the sister's wife, cannot fall on Isser Eishach because she was Aishas Ach first. So 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 the Gemara says like this. Kevam, this is the point, and this is the whole point of the Gemara of the reason why Beishamai says, take a look at the picture over here. When 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 Rachel Rachel is a daughter of Ruvain, right? Rachel is a daughter of Ruvain. Even before Shimon married Ruvain, even before Shimon married uh, Rachel, 
Reuven, it's his daughter. He can't have, he can't marry his daughter. So she was an, she was a bas or an achais isha, whatever, an erva before she married Shimon. So when she married Shimon, she's considered like a strange lady, as if she was never married to Shimon. When it concerns with that, she she she, she doesn't have she doesn't have the asis ach fall on her. She's only known as an erva, not his brother's wife. So therefore, when Shimon dies. The only thing that's falling to Yibam is his brother's wife, Miriam, not the Erva. So we look at it as if the only Miriam is falling to Yibam, and that's why, according to Beshamay, Reuven could 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 uh, supposed to uh, do do um, Yibam or Chalitza to the co-wife. That's what he's saying. Even the also Isha Heses Chach Lechayla Isha Chayis Isha, the Eishes Ach business will not fall will not fall upon the Isser of being a sister, the wife's sister, or any erva. Whatever erva it had, the iser of Aishas Ah will not come on to the erva. It's it's known as an erva. Have a late sort of erva, shloibim kai mitzvah. So this is like a regular co-wife where there is no mitzvah of Yibun on the erva. There is no mitzvah of Yibun of the erva. It's almost as if the, yibun, the erva is not even married to the to the brother and therefore vishari it's permitted and obligated to do yibam with the co-wife and that's what this uh, opinion of beishamai is called to beishamai if they do chalitza beishamai post them beishamai says you're supposed to do chalitza and when you do chalitza it is it is this lady cannot marry a kohen because she had a chalitza and basil says no she you don't have to do of course you don't do chalitza on the co-wife and therefore, if you did chalitza, it's a joke. So that co-wife could always marry a kohen. So the Gemara says, Pshita, of course. Well, I mean, it's obvious. I could figure this out myself. If you, if uh, what is the Mishnah teaching me? So if the Mishnah is teaching you la puke drab yoichin and benuri, the ama boyu nesakalam tzaros sheyu chalitzas v'loy misyabmis kamash mulan de basil machshirim. In other words, I would have thought that let basil, you know, make it that you do chalitza to the co-wife. Because there's an opinion of Rabbi Yechon and Benir, says that the co-wife shouldn't go free. The Hillel should like, you know, at least machnia themselves and humble themselves, so to speak, to the opinion of Beishamai and require at least, at the very least, a chalitza for this woman. So the Kamash Mulam, that our Mishnah says, no, we don't hold like Rabbi Yechon ben Nuri. And according to Beis Hillel, this co-wife goes out without a chalitza. And if you did chalitza, it's a total joke because she's never required that. And, that's, and therefore, this co-wife is permitted to to uh, to marry a Kohen. This Yab move, you make Yibam. The Mishnah said Basila Poislam. Basila says th- this was um if they got married, if the Ruvain did marry the co-wife, then not only that, it's a it's a marriage beisser. So when if Ruvain dies, then the, the co-wife can never marry a co- uh, a Kohen because she was married Biznus. So Hatu Lomali, what do I need this extra case? So the Mishnah says, I do the Tanu Khaltu, Tanu Namin Yamu. We want to keep it parallel. You, you gave me a case if they did chalitza, so you gave me a case if if they did yibum. But and if, uh, but there's no real novel teaching with this uh, case of telling me that they did yibum. Now comes the subject of 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 today, and this is why it's very very interesting. Um, the, a, a very interesting gemara, a topic called loisus gaidudu. We have a halacha in the Torah, a, 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 din in the, a mitzvah in the Torah, a lav in the Torah, it would seem that we now let us separate. Groups. In other words, we have to come up with one psaka lacha for everybody. So the Mishnah is uh, that we first, like the derech of the Gemara is, the way of the Gemara is first it starts off with the topic and then brings it back to our Mishnah. Tanan Hosom, we learned over there in Mesech the Megillah, we had this. Megillah's Nikras Bachar Asa, Vishnim Asa, Shlesh Asa, Babasa, Bachamisha Asa, Lepachas, Layasa. There's a Mishnah that teaches you, but the main point of the Mishnah is that if you live outside Jerusalem, you read the Megillah. On the 14th day in Jerusalem, Chazal with Masakim, because it had a wall around it, you read it on the 15th day, right? That you know from Masech to Megillah. So, Amalei Rosh Rakesh Rabbi Yechonim, Shrakesh says to Rabbi Yechonim, Ikru Khan Loisis Kaidudu. But doesn't the Torah say, Thou shalt not form groups? And here you have a group of Jews reading on the 14th and a group of Jews reading on the 15th, like Tasa, Gudas, Gudas. Don't make, don't make the Torah like two Torahs. Some people keep the Torah this way and this way. So, how could the Anshe Knesset Gedola be Mesakin that you read the Megillah on two separate days? So, first the Gemara interrupts. What do you mean? I need Loisus Gaidudu to teach you the main teaching of the word Loisus Gaidudu. The Torah says, don't make a tattoo, right? 
And don't wound yourself when somebody dies. That's the derech goyim. So that's what Lysis guy to do teaches you. Don't wound yourself. Don't cause blood to run uh, because you're so upset that somebody died. Don't make yourself a wound, Almeis, just because somebody died to the love. So that's what Lysis guy to do teaches you. So the Gemara says you can learn two things. In came lame loy to guy to do without the extra tough loy to guy to do. Don't make wound yourself. This guy to do teaches you that you can't have separate groups. Two different Torahs, two different mitzvahs, two different people keeping the Torah this way or that way. So then the question is, my tis guy to do? Shema mino lachidasa teaches you the extra soft teaches you that it's teaching you don't make separate groups. The emel kula hachidasa. The Gemara says maybe it's only teaching you that you can't have separate groups. I don't understand this. How the pasuk says lemes for a dead person, but maybe the pasuk is only teaching you not to have two different Torahs. So the, and not and came lay macraw loy to guy do my loy to guy to do why is the extra dollar there shma mina tarta you link two ideas from that pasuk one one idea is that you can't wound yourself just because somebody died because you're so upset and two two uh um two the uh, is you can't form separate groups just to point out to you Tysus, you see you always see dafiomi coincidences Tysus asks a important question which um, you tell me that you're not allowed to wound yourself just because somebody died, but the Gemara says in Sanhedrin that Rabbi Akiva would whack himself, slap himself, because Rabbi Eleza was passed on. Blood was flowing out of Rabbi Akiva because he was so upset that Rabbi Eleza died. And therefore, how was Rabbi Akiva allowed to do that? So Rabbi Yitzchak answered because maybe the Torah was only talking about if you're wounding yourself like with a, with a pen, with a knife, making a, a wound that way, but just slapping yourself and then a wound opens up, that's not the Isser. Or Torah, he said that Rabbi Lezer, you're permitted. He not dying, you're not, he wasn't wounding himself because somebody died. He was wounding himself because the Torah that, that now was lost because the person that learned this Torah is no more here. And this is so interesting how this Tysus comes up uh, on the day after uh, the, uh, Rabbi Kanievsky was nifter. Anyway, so Amale, so the so Rabbi, so back back to the question. Rosh Lakish was asking Rabbi Yochanan, how is it that uh, Rabbi Yochanan, uh, how is it that they were masakin two days to read the Megillah? It, it's you're not allowed to form groups. The Torah says Amale. So Rabbi Yochanan asked back, At Khan Shenisa. You didn't learn up until Masech the Megillah. You didn't find the Machlaikis. We find many times in, in, the, in the, the, for example, in Psachim, which comes before Masech the Megillah, there are Mokam Shnahagal Asas, Malachim Ar Psachim Ar Katsais Oisin, Mokam Shnahagal Loy Asas, Ain Oisin. The Gemara says, the Mishnah says, that if your minig of your place is to work Erev Pesach, you could go to work. If your minig is not to go to work Erev Pesach, you don't go to work. So you see that places, places, had different minhagim. So why are you only questioning the Mishnayis Megillah? Amalei, so Rishlakis answered back, Amina lach Surah. I'm telling you, an Isser, yet the people on the 15th are not allowed to read on the 14th, and the people on the 14th are not allowed to read on the 15th. And you're bringing me something about a minig? Chachamim made up different times to read the Megillah for different places. So that's, that's why I'm more disturbed by Megillah reading, which, which was the original enactment was for two different days. And you're just bringing a question from a Mishnah. I wasn't disturbed by the Mishnah, which is only a minig. And if you want, you probably could work, even if your minig was not to work. So the Gemara asks back, if the minig is not to work, there would be an iser to work. We learned in the Mishnah, even the night before, Bishame says you're not allowed to go to work, and Basila says you are. And oyster means that there would be a, a prohibition to go to work. It's not just a, a custom, a find in. Over there, it's different. If you don't go to work, you're not showing two groups. People say that the reason why you're not going to work is because you don't have a work at, you don't have, you're not busy at work, but not because you're doing the minic. So it doesn't really look like two tires, but reading Megillah for two different cities at different times, that looks like giving two tires. And the, and the, and the Chumash says, don't make two tires 
uh, it, it, don't make two Torahs out of, out of, uh, out of a Takana. Now bring it back to our Mishnah. How could you say that there's none of uh, that we didn't have two Torahs? For Beshama Matir Matsaras Laachon Basil Oisrim. Basil says, you're not allowed to do uh, Basil. Beshami says the co wife is permitted to do Yibim and Chalitza. And Basil says, no. And not only that, you do it without Chalitza. And we never equal them. In other words, Basil's family, they never did Yibim or Chalitza for a co wife. And Beshami's family, they always did Yibim and Chalitza. And, and therefore, according to Beishamah's family, there were some mamzerim, according, there were some kids who may have been mamzerim, according to Beishamah's family. And yet, we didn't force Beishamah to listen to Beishamah. So the Gemara says, maybe they did listen to Beishamah. Do you say that Beishamah, we go to Daf Yudal and Aleph, the Beishame always went with what they said. They said their opinion, but they 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 agreed with Beis Hillel. They didn't follow their own words. They actually agreed with Beis Hillel and and did not uh, did not they didn't uh, do Yebem Chalitza according to their own words. Wait a second. The Gemara is going to bring up the, the Mishnah itself. Rabbi Yochanan says they actually did. Uh, Rabbi Elkanan, who says um, uh, they actually did and actually encourage others people to do it. That's what Asu Vasu. Who plicked Rav Shmuel. The Rav Amar Rav says Loy Asu B'Shamei Kedivrayim. Actually, B'Shamei did not follow their opinion, and they did not uh, in- initiate the practice of doing Yibam Chalisa for a co-wife. Who Shmuel Amar Shmuel says Asu Vasu. They did do it. So really, it's a machlekes if B'Shamei Basil followed their opinion. So it's not clear in the Mishnah, it's not clear if they actually, if it was just, you know, following their opinion or stating their opinion or actually put it into practice. According to Rav, they didn't put it into practice. And Shmuel says they did put it into practice. Now, the Gemara asks a, a question. What do you mean Beishamai didn't follow their opinion? Amos, when can that be? Because Elay Mekoy Dembaskal, are you telling me before a voice from heaven came down and told us there was a voice from heaven, the Gemara, we had this Gemara in Erevin, that said that we should always pass in like Beis Hillel. So before that voice came down, so then my time at the Monday Amalai also, what is the reason of the opinion that said that they did not follow their practice? What is the, what is the reason of the opinion that said they did not follow their practice? Because the, 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 it's before the Baskoil, Beishamai should follow their, their opinion. If, if, the, if it was after the uh, voice from heaven came down that you should paskin like Beis Hillel, my time demand the also. Why does the opinion of the one that said that Beishamai still initiated their, their opinion? A voice from heaven came back and said, don't paskin like Beis Hillel. So I could say that the machloik is between Rav and Shmuel. If Bishamai followed their opinion, could it be that they're arguing before the Baskal or after the voice from heaven? If it's before the voice of heaven came down. So for example, the Basil Ruba, most of the uh, uh, most of the Basil had the majority. So Laman the Amaloi also, according to the opinion that said Beishamai did not practice what they held, is the Habeisil Ruba because Beisil was the majority. Uman the Hama also, but according to the opinion that they did practice what they held, Beishamai still held their opinion because Ki Azlin and Basaruba. When do you go after the majority? When they're equal in in, in intelligence and in IQ. Hacha over here, Beishamai held that Beishamai mechadei tvei. The Beishamai group had a much sharper Tamide Chachamim, and therefore it's before the voice of heaven came down. So Beishamai held their ground and paskin like what they did. The Iba is saying, if you want, I could say La'achar Basko. Even after the voice from heaven came down, th- there was still a Machlekes if Beishamai followed their opinion. Manda Amaloi Asu, the one that said Beishamai didn't follow their opinion anymore. A voice came down from heaven, not to follow their opinion. Donaf a voice came down from heaven. Umanda Amma Asu, that they did follow their opinion. Rabbi Yeshua, who? Rabbi Shehi, Rabbi Yeshua, he, it's Rabbi Yeshua. The Amma who said, Ein mashgitim abaskal. Even if a voice from heaven comes down, you don't pay attention to a baskal. So now, 
basically, we had it here on Machlokes. Again, Rosh Lakish asked the question for Rabbi Yochanan. How is it that on Purim, they made two groups? One group reads on the 14th, one group reads on the 15th. Now our Gemara is going to ask a question from our Mishnah. Our Mishnah, there is an opinion in our Mishnah that Beishamai stated an opinion, and there is an opinion that held that Beishamai put it into practice. And they actually required a co-wife to have Chibim and Chalitza. So, so how could be Beishamai is holding they need Chibim and Chalitza, and Basil's uh, family and Basil's towns held that there's no Yibam and Chalitza in this case by the co-wife. So, but the question is, Mount Yama also, according to the opinion that Beishamai followed their own opinion, Karin and Bey, Loisus Gaidu, but don't you have the problem of Loisus Gaidu? Loitasa, Gudas, Gudas, you can't make uh, you can't make two groups out of Jewish people. So here's the two Turutsan that's going to answer both questions. Omar Abai, Abai says, Ki Amrin Loitis Gaidu, when do you hold of Loitis Gaidu, making groups? Kagoin Shnei Botidin and Birachas. You have two courthouses in one city. One city has to go with one opinion. If they're in one city and one court in the city goes like Beishamai and one court in the city goes like Basilo, that's Loisus Gaidu. If you have two uh, courthouses in two different cities, there is no problem if one, you know, New York goes with Beishamai and Jersey goes with Basilo, that's not a problem with Loisus Gaidu. Amalei Sarava, Rava says, but sometimes the families of Beishamai live together with Beishilo. So they're always considered like two courthouses in one city. That's not like Beishamai lived in one place and Beishilo lived in one place. They seem to have lived in one city. So how could, why is there no problem of Beishamai of Loisus Gaidudu? Ella Amar Rava, Rava says, Ki Amrin Loisus Gaidudu. When do you say Loisus Gaidudu? Koim Bezden Beir Achas. If you have one courthouse and half, and the courthouse says, decide what you want. Half the court says, go one direction like Beishamai, and half says, go like Beishilo. But if you have two courthouses in one city, but they're respectable courthouses that have nothing to do with each other, less than one, then it's not a problem. If the courthouse poskins, one courthouse poskins like Beishamai, and one courthouse poskins like Beishilo. So you can already see that there is no problem of Loisus Gaidudu, because in Jerusalem, only in Jerusalem, they're reading on the 15th, and only in outside Jerusalem, they're reading on the 14th. So that's not a problem. And even in one city, if you have two courthouses, two respectable courthouses, and one court says Beishamai, and one court says Beishilo, you could poskin in both directions. Tashima come in here. In the, in the city of Rabbi Eliezer, remember Rabbi Eliezer holds that you're allowed to prepare the Mila knife on Shabbos. So in the city of Rabbi Eliezer, they would actually cut down wood to make hot coals to prepare a Mila knife on Shabbos. And they would wait to Shabbos to do that to show the how beloved the mitzvah of Mila is. Last is Basel to make that a Mila knife, that metal Mila knife. In Rabbi Yosef Glili's town, they didn't hold up this whole thing of a problem of chicken and milk because the, the, in the, in, in they learned that the only issue of, of meat and milk is actual animal meat, not bird's meat. That's, and so it's mashma. So the Gemara's question is, in Rabbi Leza's place, they would make the Mila knife. Where Abkiva lived, Loy, they would not make the Mila knife. The Tanya, we learned in the Brisa, Klaalam Rabakiva, Komlok Shafsal Sumer Shabbos, Ain Daiches Shabbos. Anything that you could have done before Shabbos, don't you cannot doesn't override the Shabbos. So, so how could it be that in the in, if you lived in Rableza's town, you made a Mila knife on Shabbos, and then lived in Rabakiva's town, you didn't make a Mila knife. So the Gemara says, behind my tufta, what kind of refutation is that? We just got through saying that it's a two different places. You can go into with two different opinions. So the Gemara says, the one that asked the question, what was he thinking? To ask such an easy question with an easy answer. He was thinking, I would think because of Shabbos, of the stringencies of Shabbos, we should have one rule that applies to all Jews. That even by Shabbos, we don't, we don't, we could have different rules for different places. 
Toshima, we learned in a, uh, in a story, the Rababo, when he came to the city of Reb Shubalevi, have a metaltel shrega. He would carry a lamp. They would light a lamp on Shabbos, and then when it when it when it burned out, Rabbi Rabbi Abo would carry it because he holds that once the fire goes out, it's not muktza, because he holds like Rabbi Shimon, there is no muktza like that. The chiik little asr Rabbi Yochanan, but when Rabbi Abo visited Rabbi Yochanan, loy have a metaltel shraga. He would not carry the lamp because Rabbi Yochanan held that this lamp is muktza. Now the high, so how could it be? That one place, uh, one place, the, the people go like Rabbi Yeshua that it's not Muktza. One place people go like Rabbi Yochan that it is Muktza. So the Gemara asks again, behind my kushi, what sign of difficulty is this? Didn't they say when two places are different, it, it's not a problem? So the Gemara says, Anan Hachi Kamrinim. Our question was, Rabbi Bo, Hechid Avid Hachi, Hechid Avid Hachi Hachi. How can Rabbi Bo? custom himself he's one person and when he visited rabbi shuba levi he would carry it and he didn't have a problem carrying the lamp and when he visited rabbi yochan and he didn't carry the lamp so what what, what how could rabbi yobo paskin like two different people so the Gemara says rabbi yobo rabbi shuba levi he holds like rabbi shuba levi that is not a problem of muksa but when he came to the city of rabbi yochan out of respect for rabbi yochan Loy have a metal tail, Mishum Kvoidi. You have respect for Rabbi Yechen and he wouldn't carry the lamp uh, because of respect. But really, he himself held that you could carry the lamp. So he suspended his opinion of Loy Suskai to do for the respect of, uh, uh, to, even though it looked like Loy Suskai to do because of the respect for honor for Rabbi Yechen. Frag the Gemara of Ika Shamoy, but didn't Rabbi Rabo come with a, 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 an assistant, a helper, and maybe he was carrying the lamp in the city of Rabbi Yechen? And for the Gemara, the Moide Leila Shema, he told his assistant, his helper, don't, when we're going to visit Rabbi Yechlem, don't follow me, don't carry the lamp after it goes out. Toshma, come in here. Now we have an Mishnah. They didn't have a problem marrying each other. So now the Gemara asks a question. How do you learn Pshat in the Mishnah if, 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 how did you learn Pshat in the Mishnah that they would marry each other into their respective family? If you always say that Beishamai never practiced what they held, they were machnia themselves, they subserviated their opinion to Basilo, so that's why they married each other. They had no problem marrying each other. Also, if you said that Beshame upheld their own opinion, why did they, why, why did weren't Beshame uh, stop marrying into Basil's family? And Basil stopped marrying into Beshame's family. So Gemara says, because at worst, at worst, what are you having over here? According to Beshame, Basil is, is saying that the woman goes without a Yibam Machalitza, so whoever marries her was only over a love. Fine. Ela Beisilo, mi Beishamai. Beisilo should not marry into Beishamai's family. Am I loy, Nimru? Why weren't they hesitant to marry into Beishamai's family? B'nei chayove kresis mamzerim ninu. Aren't, according to Beisilo, Beishamai's family has mamzerim in there. You can't say that Basil holds that the only time you get a, you become a mamzer is only if you marry your mother or something, wherever there's like Mises Besden. Because there's an Rabbi says clearly that Basil holds that even if there's an Isakaris, for example, marrying your Aishas Ach, the kid that's born from such a marriage is a mamzer. So the question is, how was it that Beis Hillel married into Beishamai's family when there is a possibility that some of Beishamai's children are mamzerim, according to Beis Hillel? Wouldn't you prove like also that Beishamai never, even though they said an opinion, they didn't follow through in their own opinion? So the Gemara answers, Lord, not true. Loilam also. They really did, Beishamai's family did upheld their opinion. And a co-wife, they actually married the co-wife to the, to the brother. But the, when they married into Basil's families, they might lose partially. They told Basil that, the, according to you, the, this family has a Sara that may have been a Mamzer. So that family didn't marry into Basil's family. 
The Mishnah goes on further and says that Tum and Tahara, they had no problem of lending uh, vessels, dishes back and forth from each other. So it must be that the Mara is saying logically that Be Shama and Basilo, if they had a problem with each other, they would notify each other before they, they lend things around. We go to Ahmed Bey's. Ahmed Bishlam, if you say, uh, perfect sense. The Moidule Mishum Hachi Lainimnu, that they notified each other. Now I understand why they had no hesitation because Beishamai would notify Beishil and Beishil would notify Beishamai. Oh, don't, uh, this according to you is Tamay Atar. If they didn't notify each other, I can understand why Beishamai and Beishil had no problem because Beishamai always hold, Beishamai is always lenient in Taharis and Beishamai holds a tar. So even if Beishil says it's Tamay, it's not a problem. The Tumas the Basilil Beshame Taharis Nino. Ella Basil me Beshame Loma Lainimo. Why would Basil not hesitate from why would Basil not hesitate borrowing dishes from Beshame? Taharis the Beshame Le Basil Tumas Nino. Any ta anything that Beshame says is tar, according to Base Hill, is Tame. We must say that when they borrow dishes from each other, they they notified each other of the potential problems. Shmami, no, that's the way they interacted with each other by notifying each other. My ulma hach the hach. What is the what is one half more than the other? So why, how do you know more from the end of the Mishnah that they notified each other than from the beginning of the Mishnah? You're saying, oh, well, it makes sense in the end of the Mishnah. Because if I would the same, I would have thought, Sara Kara Isla. I would think by the first case, by the co-wife. Really, they didn't notify each other, but they had no problem marrying into each other because Beis Hillel would have heard about it. You know, co-wife being married, everybody hears about it. Kamash Mulan, from the end of the Mishnah, that it must be they had communication with each other um, and, they, and they notified each other of different opinions when they interacted with each other by lending dishes to each other. And so we could say the same idea. When they married into each other, they notified potential problems. Another 30 seconds just to get to the next Tashma to finish this whole thing. Gufo, we learned. The only way to make a mamzer is only if you marry somebody who is Arias and the punishment would be Karis. Who agrees to who? That there's Beishamai would agree to Beishilo that, that if you marry an Ashes Ach, you get a kares. If you marry Beisilos erva, if you marry the if you marry the co-wife, according to Beishamai, that co-wife is a chayve lav. Bnei lav ninu. That chayve lav is of course and not and not a mamza there because if the woman leaves and marries without a yibun achalitza, it's only a lav. Ela Beisilo le Beishamai. Beisilo would say about Beishamai's case when they married each other, if the if if the brother married the co-wife. He gave a chayve karis near. That is chayve karis. So what's being agreed to that? So this is what it says. Loylan beishamai beisilul. Rabbi Shamay is agreeing to beisilul that the marriage doesn't produce a mamza. La puke mid Rabbi Kiva. The Oma yesh mamza mechayve lavim. Kamash malon de mamza mechayve lavim. In other words, we exclude the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva hold that if a yavama would marry a strange per uh, would marry a stranger. Without Yibam and Chalitza, the child would be a mamzer. So we that is a as a way off opinion that no one really holds that. Only Rabbi Akiva holds that, and we want to say that Beishamai and Bishoilo both disagree with Rabbi Akiva. They hold that only time you can make a mamzer is only if there's a chayve krisus. Okay, we're going to continue on with this discussion of of Leitzis do and did Beishamai uphold their opinions if 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 Beis Hillel argued against them. Well, a Koyan, I'm sorry. Yeah. A Koyan cannot marry a girl and he cannot marry a divorced woman, he cannot marry a woman that's halal. But what if she doesn't tell him? What if he marries her without knowing? And then he finds out. What is he supposed to do? And right. He needs, he needs so, the do, 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 so the Kedushan is effective, right? Because it's only a Chayve Lavim. And okay. we hold that the Kedushan would be effective. But we just saw an opinion of Rabbi Akiva that if you marry somebody that you're not supposed to, that there's a love not to do so, then the child would be a mamzer. So that's mm -hmm. big problems. But uh, we try. Can the coin still uh, do the duchening and everything? Uh, I, 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 I don't think so. I don't think in, in some shuls they would allow that. The coin that's married to a grusha on purpose. I'm not no, sure. But what if he didn't know that uh, she was uh, a Grusha? 
Er fragt, das haben wir ja genommen in der Kai. In der Kai ist nicht gewusst. Sie hat nicht gesucht, sie, sie ist ein Grieche. Und die Kassen gehoben mit ihr. Kann der Kai, kann der Kai, er fragt, kann der Kai machen Dichening? Das fragt er. Kann er Dichen für, für die für Kuh? Er hat nicht gewusst, ich weiß nicht. Er weiß nicht, ich bin der Kai. Ja. 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 Ja.